Hello everybody, today we are in Fly Simware's Cessna 414 Chancellor. Um, I've had a few requests from uh, some of my previous videos on this aircraft about capturing glide slopes, um, specifically uh, transferring into an ILS. So we're going to do a couple different examples of what is going on and really it depends on what Garmin you're using here and how that ties into the autopilot here. So we're currently, um, you know, I've got an uh, active pause, so we, we can just talk for a minute. Um, and we are tuned into the ILS for Santa Barbara, which you can see here. I have the correct headed, uh, or sorry, course loaded into our CDI. You can see we have the glide slope showing up on there. We currently have our autopilot on heading mode and altitude mode at 2,000 feet. So we're going to go ahead and keep flying towards it as that needle comes in. I'm going to go ahead and click on the nav button and that is going to turn us over to join on the ILS. You can see I do not have a flight plan loaded. This is going to be the simplest sort of configuration. This would be kind of like if you were doing a VFR flight, but you wanted to load it in an ILS to come in and have some guidance there and you're just kind of using the heading mode to fly around not using a nav mode at all for your sort of in route flight so let's go ahead and unpause um and we're going to uh like i said carry on over and we zoom out here you can see we've got santa barbara over there which is right here is the runway now this is the stock Garmin 530. Um, so I do not have the working title one that you can download from the marketplace installed. Now, even Microsoft and their default aircraft now use the working title version. So essentially this is like an old version, but this is where I think some people run into an issue is that if you're using this one, there's a, kind of a unique step that you need to take in order to um, capture the glide slope. It's actually done um, underneath it or above it already. I'm gonna click on the nav button now. And you can see that just clicking on that nav button, we're catching up to the glide path itself. It just switched over, immediately caught on to what we needed to do. And it's gonna fly us over to intercept localizer, but we've already caught back up to the glide slope and we are uh, following that down. That's going to sort of balance out a little bit. We're going super fast here because really this is a demonstration about capturing the glide path and not uh, the um, sort of landing techniques of this aircraft. Uh, but you can see it's going to come over now. It's going to line up on the localizer, but we're descending just fine. Captured on. All I had to do was turn on the nav mode. So that is example number one of really coming in and capturing it. Super simple. Hit the nav button when you're about to hit the ILS. Boom, captures, follows the glide slope down, um, and you are good to go. And if we wanted to, we can continue and uh, land the aircraft, obviously not at the speed. But let's go ahead and do situation number two, where you have a flight plan loaded and you're following, say, a GPS uh, flight plan and you need to capture an ILS to come in to land. So let's go ahead and get that set up. All right, just to show you what um, I have planned it in here, just so I didn't have to plan it in the Garmin itself, uh, which it works out just fine. But you can see we just have um, Oxnard to Santa Barbara with the ILS. Um, loaded for the approach, which is this purple part here. So um, we're going to be using a GPS to hit these sort of waypoints and then tune in the ILS as we did uh, before, where we had to capture it, come down and fly in. Now, this is where I think a lot of people are like, I just fly past the glide slope and just stay at my uh, altitude setting. And I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and jump on in. And we I'm just going to fast forward the flight to where we're really on the that same sort of position we were in the last one. 
Okay, so here we are in the same situation. Except this time we, you can see we have a flight plan, which is a GPS flight plan. You want this to say GPS, um, which I, I imagine you already had that active because you would have been following a flight plan to come in. We still need to make sure we tune the ILS. So um, we can go ahead and swap on down here. And of course, Santa Barbara is 110.3. Pop that into the active, okay? You can see it picks it up here. Now we're still in GPS mode, so it's not gonna show up on our CDI. So we're at the same exact situation. The only difference here is that we're flying on our nav mode instead of our heading mode, which is what we were doing in the last uh, example. So uh, do I have that there we go. Now we are configured um, to hold at 2000 feet following a GPS flight plan. Um, and we have our ILS tuned into our nav frequencies here. Yeah, we got our lights on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unpause it, and we will fly along here. It's going to do a little bit of corrections as we um, get perfectly lined up. Now, what's going to happen is really we're going to turn over onto at Habit. We'll turn over to basically that's lining us up on the localizer. So as we get close to that, we can switch it over to V-Lock here by hitting our CDI button and this will um, change over to actually be um, the ILS. Now this is where people are like, okay, great. I've changed over, our nav button is on. Um, it, it might even show uh, the localizer and glide slope in green here. But then you just fly right over the glide slope as the arrow is coming down. Now what's happening is that essentially when you're changing from uh, GPS to V-Log, you're doing kind of a, a mode change. And in most autopilots, that would essentially turn off your nav and turn you into what's considered a roll mode, which just keeps you uh, straight and level. So. It's a little misleading because this aircraft does not tie into the stock um, Garmin to turn off your nav mode to give you an indication that that has happened. So we're gonna make our turn here in just a moment. And that's when I'm gonna change it over to V-Lock and you'll notice that our sort of lights will light up and it'll seem like everything's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and make our turn. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and click over to our CDI. Oh, actually, I didn't get this set to 71, 75 degrees. Sorry about that. There we go. So now we've got our, uh, our course tuned and our frequency tuned. And you can see it's turning over. And we have our glide slope um, on our CDI. It's not green uh, because we haven't captured it. Um, so what's going to happen is we're, we're lined up and we're just going to be flying directly on the localizer because uh, we do have that captured. Really, this should have just turned off completely because we did a mode change, but it does not. So this is what gets misleading. So we're going to go ahead and just advance time a little bit here so we can watch that needle start to come down. There it comes, and we'll go back to normal now. So you watch, and we're just going to fly right over it. Yep, nothing's changing. We didn't capture it. Go ahead and click that nav button again, and the GS lines up, and we captured the glide slope, and it's coming down. So think of it that we did a mode change from GPS to V-Lock and you can see that the nav still had the localizer which is why it was keeping us you know aligned with the runway but when we passed over the glide slope it didn't go down uh, because that mode change essentially just kept us in nav and not approach and there is no approach button on here to sort of engage in that so you just hit the nav button again and it will just capture the glide slope. And as you can see, as before, we are coming down like a rocket ship, but 
uh, we are coming down following that directly down to the runway as before lined up both on the localizer and glide slope so that's using the default Garmin if you wanted to do a RNAV it's not possible with this setup um, because this Garmin here will seem like you got everything loaded you can activate the approach um, well you can load the approach and activate it in here but it doesn't tie over to here because you don't have approach button and same again you'll just fly right on over the RNAV uh, vertical guidance so to fix really all of this we're going to do two more examples um, we'll go ahead and end that there and um, we're going to download the working title mod which is essentially default Garmin in Microsoft Flight Simulator now because it's default in all the default aircraft. If you're using third party aircraft, you still need to download it from the marketplace because they don't really have control over um, those sort of systems. They're not, not theirs, right? So um, you can see in, if I type in Garmin, um, I do not have it currently installed. I do have the NXI, but we're not using the G1000 here. These gray ones here are what Microsoft has, and you can see you can't uninstall those or do anything with them because they are um, default. This is like a core element to the flight simulator. So if you were to jump in, say, like the Bonanza, um, it would be the same Garmin as this one here. So let's go ahead and install that one. And it's super small. I mean, it's, what is that? 206, or sorry, uh, the 26 kilobytes is tiny. Um, so we can go ahead and come back to the world map here. And um, we're just going to load in that same flight. So if I do Oxnard to Santa Barbara, uh, we'll do low altitude and then load in um, the ILS. So same, same exact flight plan. Um, I'll rejoin again uh, once we are right here, and you'll see the, the difference uh, with using the working title versus the default one. So let's go ahead and get that loaded up. Okay, so here we are in the same situation again, uh, except the only difference is we are now using the working title. Uh, Garmin, which um, I showed you how to download that. Uh, it's very simple and it's uh, essentially now the default. So we are set on a GPS um, as far as what we have loaded and what our autopilot is following. We're in nav mode, holding at our altitude. We have our ILS tune, which is 110.3, um, and you can see that it is uh, for Santa Barbara. So we're going to go ahead and um, pause that. And um, as we come over, you'll notice now that this ties in, I would say more accurately, you'll notice what I was talking about with mode changes. Um, let's go ahead and speed up the process here for you. Um, so as we come over, we're getting a little bit of wobble as it's catching up to that flight plan. So see when we're going to make our turn here. It usually gives us a nice little warning. There we go. You can see down here it's saying, all right, in four seconds, three, two, one. And then you can see it's making the turn. So if we go ahead and click over just like we did before to our CDI, look what happened. It turned off nav mode, which is what really should happen when you do a mode change because it's more of like a safety feature there. So we need to go ahead and click nav mode back on. And now you can see it saying, oh, okay, yep. Uh, we switched over to a different mode. Nav mode, localizer, and glide slope are captured um, because they are in green. So now when we come across, we don't have to hit that nav button again because essentially it turned off and we have to turn it back on. So if we advance time again, you're gonna see that um, flight path come down and as it comes down you watch our vertical speed here there it goes captured it and we are going to fly 
down to the runway, no problem whatsoever. Like I said, in the um, sort of vanilla default older Garmin, if you haven't downloaded the working title one, an RNAV is not possible. It'll just fly over because you can't select approach button on, on there. If you have a key bind for approach or a button like on a control panel and hit the approach button, it will work. Uh, but if you're going by actually what is tied in between the original Garmin and the autopilot, it will not capture the glide slope on a uh, on the, the basic one. In fact, it won't even show up. It'll be those little red uh, hash marks saying that, hey, I don't even have a glide slope. Uh, it's not getting the information from the Garmin. But the working title will do that. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to load in essentially, again, the same flight plan, except this time we're going to load in an RNAV and we will fly that in and you'll see that this Garmin actually ties in um, with the information here is getting communicated to the autopilot for the RNAV. So let's go ahead and get that. Okay, so here we are again in the same situation. Um, we do have the RNAV uh, loaded underneath our procedures and active in the Garmin. You can see in our autopilot, we do have the nav on we are on GPS mode, um, and we are holding our altitude, same again, at 2,000 feet. Um, and so, in this situation, we're not going to have to change really anything. Um, the Garmin's going to do all the communication over to this sort of mode selector uh, for our autopilot. So let's go ahead and unpause it here. It's going to do a little bit of adjusting. Now, we should get a notification in here that hopefully will say like LPV, um, which would be the approach that we um, have loaded in. So um, if we, let's go ahead and advance things forward. Make our turn. So right there, you can see we this Aceva to Naps leg activated our um, LPV, which is the RNAV. So you can also see now that our flight path is actually showing up on our CDI. So it's it's communicated to the CDI and the autopilot that hey, you've connected to an LPV. If you're using the older, non-working title Garmin, it'll just have a little approach lit underneath here, but it does not communicate to the CDI or the mode selector, so it that's why you just fly directly over. So, same again if we speed up time, watch the needle come down, and really once we hit naps, uh, I'm a little high. It's 1,800 feet for it, but there we go. We just captured it, and we are now coming down. So you can see the GS lit up, and same again. We will just follow that all the way down to the runway, no problem whatsoever. So if you don't want to use the working title, essentially you can still capture ILS uh, approaches from a GPS flight plan. You just need to hit that nav button again. Um, but what I would recommend doing is download the working title version because it communicates much better with uh, the autopilot and the CDI. And when you switch modes, it actually turns off the nav to let you know that, hey, I no longer know what you're telling me to do because um, you made that mode change. Click it back on and it goes, oh, okay, we made a mode change to use our frequency or our nav here and it will adjust and then follow the glide slope as you're coming in. So uh, I hope that helps. Um, it, it's, it, it is misleading in that default version changing over to an ILS. Our navs are only possible in the mod version. Um, the PMS 50 does a little bit of weird things with it. So I, I definitely would recommend the working title 
uh, version versus the PMS 50 uh, really only to do with our navs it, it, it kind of goes to vectors versus following the, the actual course that you have in place so anyways um, that should solve every situation that you come across as far as uh, using the autopilot and capturing uh, all different types of uh, glide slopes um, and approaches. So please like and subscribe if you found this information uh, useful. Um, it definitely helps me grow the channel and provide more content like this. Um, until next time, thank you for watching and take care.